Hi, um, I'm going to do part three or step three of my how to make a community garden video um, series and um, I've, I'm doing it really slowly so you, if you are making a community garden from scratch you've got time to consider those steps so um, bear with me and um, I'll go really slowly. <clears throat> Um, each of the processes is sort of a little mini project in itself. So this step three I've got for you, in my opinion, this is how I did it, but things, like I said before, things could change depending on the space itself or whether you haven't got a space in mind yet. But the next thing to consider is once you've done your step one and two, um, considering your mission, your overall mission, and the type of project you want it to be, and how you're going to manage that, you um, that will dictate the kind of space that you want to have. Um, sorry about my throat, I'm a bit croaky today. <clears throat> so, say you want to do um, a wildlife friendly garden, um, only. So you want to look for somewhere that is, um, it's possible to have some, maybe some wildflowers in there, um, you know, bird boxes up and so on, bee, bee boxes and things like that as well. <clears throat> um, and that might dictate where your space is. So, you know, if this is a very central spot in town you're looking at um, it might not be the right spot based on what the council will and will not allow and I'm assuming that the land you're looking at um, is a council piece of land at the moment I'll just make that assumption all the way through as the likelihood is quite high that you'll be looking at a piece of land that the council owns um, if you wanted to create a vegetable garden for the community um, again, you're going to have to consider how that would sit in the middle of um, a town centre, for instance, or if it's something that needs to be more on the outskirts. For me, I would consider perhaps taking on an allotment for something like that. And then you've got that kind of theme all around you. Um, <clears throat> you've got to consider the possibility of vandalism. It's, it's a reality, I'm afraid. Um, so if, if a lot of work's going into a plot of land, so planting and so on, um, you might you might feel feel like that would have more success being slightly on the outskirts or even in a in a local village. Um, however, you might think that's a really good idea for an inner city project. Um, if you can get lots of people kind of in and out all the time, there's a likelihood that it won't get vandalised. It depends how often you leave it between times, between visits. So that's another consideration as well. Um, uh, so what I would do yeah, is really, really get a grip to what you want to achieve in the space and then Put, put that in the frame of a physical space. Um, walk around your local area, look at spaces that aren't used, sort of gather a load of ideas up about spaces you see that are possibilities. And then with your kind of sketch of what you want to achieve with the space, think about how people are going to use that space based on your plan. Um, is it high? vandalism area? Are there lots of overlooking houses? Could you get the local community to keep a watch on the garden? How could you get people involved so they've got some ownership over it and don't want to vandalise? There could be some um, projects in there that kind of <clears throat> alleviate boredom for perhaps young people. And I don't want to say it's always young people that are doing vandalism, but for as a for instance, um, I'm not a fan of blocking people out of a project. Community is community, all ages. So you might want to think about, well, if it's the middle of a city, how could you get people involved to 
sidestep that possibility of vandalism, for instance. Um, so there's lots of things to consider after you've decided what your project is and then where the physical space is. <clears throat> you also want to consider parking, how volunteers are going to get in and manoeuvre around the space. Is there room for a lock-up shed? Is it a gated um, space? Like my previous um, garden was a gated churchyard, so we were able to have quite a lot of stuff in there quite safely um, tucked away. Or is it a very open space where people will need to bring their own tools every time you have a volunteer session? Um, events so how might you hold fundraising events if you're going to do that in the space um, that's another thing to consider and I think I'll leave I'll leave that there because there's a lot around that that you'll have to think about so just to recap then once you've done your step one and two and I've posted that in the other video you need to then start looking for your green space and as you look at the green spaces around you consider how it's going to be used will it fit you can't you know wedge a square peg in a round hole and so <clears throat> you want everyone around you to be pleased with what you're doing because the support of the local community is absolutely vital to the health of a project <clears throat> It's all very well going, I'm going to do it and people just better get to like it. But that just is not how it works. And, and to be honest, you don't want it to work like that. You, you want to have harmony with the people around the project. So, you know, if it's a very villagey area, people are going to be much more used to wildy spaces around them in the countryside. And they might be really keen on the idea of a sort of a wild flowery area which is used just I don't know to do wildflower workshops or something um, in a city people might be keener to see something smart could be the other way around but you you really must consider the people around you because they will eventually they'll become hopefully very quickly your support system um, <clears throat> so take a notebook out list the green spaces, photograph them, think about them in theory and then if you can match your idea to one of the green spaces you've actually seen that will be the step four and that's where you start to put a plan together on paper and think about approaching um, the landowner. So I'll leave you with that step three. Um, it's quite a big step and there's lots of thought around that there's lots of considering and this is where those people skills that I mentioned before come in handy um, you can't be pig-headed in your mission you have to think of other people you've got to remember that everyone's different everyone's idea of a green space is different every everyone's idea of a beautiful green space is very very different doesn't make them wrong so you have to gel with everyone that's going to be around you as you move your project on. So that's step three of my how to make a community garden and um, I will get to making step four very soon but for now that's it and I will see you in another video.